All right, welcome fifth graders. Today we're going to continue multiplying decimals uh, and we're still on lesson 10. First, we're going to estimate, estimate, and then we are going to simply just multiply that and see how close uh, we should be to our answer so that when we do multiply, we have an idea of where we should be at, okay? So I'm going to take a look at C here and let me zoom in actually here, there we go. So in C, you have six and three tenths times 44. Six and three tenths, I'm going to simply just round to six. 44, I'm going to round to just 40, okay? Six times 40, I know, is going to be 240. All right. Let's see. Let's continue. So now we are going to simply just take this six and three tens and write it without a decimal point. Very easy. Sixty-three. tens. And now we just multiply by that bottom number. Let's do it in a different color times 44. Pretty easy, right? Let's continue to multiply now. First, we're going to start with our ones, then work our way to our tens here. Four ones times three is going to give me 12. Carry my one. 4 times 6, 24, plus your 1, you get 25. Okay, so we finished with the 1s. Now we're going to move on to the 4 tens, which is 40. Now, in 40, you have 1 zero. Where is the zero here? Well, that zero, we are going to place it down before we multiply. And now we can start. So same process, four times three gives me 12. Carry my one, write it over. Four times six, 24, plus your one, you get a nice 25. So we got our partial products. Now let's add those. Two plus zero gives me two. Five plus two gives me seven. Two plus five, gives me seven again, and we have our two. Okay, so you might be thinking, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. No, we have one, well actually two more steps. We have the tenths that we need to bring down. Ooh, that was so cool, right? Yeah, that was, yeah, that's really right, that was so cool. How was your things? Okay, now I'm gonna show you two ways to do this. The first one is the long way, and the second one is the quickest way. Do whichever one you feel works for you. Okay, so here is the first way. You have to draw out your place value chart. And in this place value chart, I'm going to put my decimal point down. Right here I know is the tenths Over here, I have my God, why is this so bad? I'm using this new computer and it's being super glitchy. So awesome. Come on, connect. There we go. Let's see, is it better? Nope. The ones. Then we got the tens. And lastly, we have the hundreds.
All right, that was very sloppy, whatever. And now the easiest or the long way is to find the place value. In this case, it's here. And you look at your last number, which in this case, we have this two. And all you would do is not do that. You would get it and put it in that place value. And then all of the rest of your numbers would follow. You get your seven, you bring your next seven, you bring your next two here. Okay, and your last step is to simply just bring down your decimal point and your answer is 277 and two tenths, okay? That's the, I guess, longer way. Here is the easiest way for me. And this is just a trick that you can use if you find that it helps. So let me uh, put this over here as well. Okay, thanks for that. Okay, so our answer was 277. Or two there. Here is what I like to do. Take a look at the place value. You have tenths. If you write it out, it looks like this. How many numbers are in the decimal place values in the thing that I just wrote, the decimal point and one? You might be thinking, oh, well, there's only one. Well, guess what? If there's only one, that means your answer will have only one decimal, like exactly over here. Okay, so one decimal point. And that's it. You don't have to draw your place value chart. And that's it. You don't have to draw your place value chart. You simply just add the decimal point uh, and make sure that it's about the same or exactly the same amount of decimal place values that you have in what they want you to have there, okay? Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. If it doesn't, please, please, please come and ask me for help. Um, but let's do another one because hopefully if it, you didn't quite get it that time, you can get it on this one. All right, so let's do this very long one here. We got 160 and 4 tenths times 17. And you know what? We forgot to check if our answer matched up, which if we look at it, yeah, yeah, it did. We got 277 and 2 tenths, which is not exactly 240, but it's, it's around there. So we did it right. Let's go on to a harder one here. Actually, I don't want to do that one. All right, let's do three here. It says Michelle multiplied three and four tenths times 52. She incorrectly, so she got it wrong, wrote 1,768 as her product. Use words numbers and or pictures to explain Michelle's mistake. Well, I can tell you already what her mistake was, but first, how about we estimate? We take an estimate and see roughly how much we should get. So we have three and four tenths. I'm going to round that to simply just three. Then I have 52. I'm going to round that to 50, three times 50 is 150. So that's how much she should have gotten, but she got way over. 
So let's find out what she possibly could have done. So let's start off by multiplying here and setting up our standard algorithm. We have 30 or, and then it's in the tens. And we're going to multiply this by 52. All right, pretty simple stuff here. Two times four, we get eight. Two times three gives me, oh, not, gives me six. Now I can move on to my five tens. But remember, you got to put your zero down. Five times four gives you 20. Carry the two. Five times three, 15, plus the two, 17. All right, now let's add these up. A plus zero gives you A, six plus zero gives you six, seven, and a one. Okay, so that's exactly what she got, but her mistake was not bringing down her place value, which is the tens. And if she applied the tens to her answer, it would be a hundred and seventy six and a tenth written like that. Okay, that was her mistake. She didn't do that last step. That is so important, super important. Michelle's got to get it together. Hopefully, you all have it together. But if you don't, come to office hours. Let me help you get it together, okay? Have a great rest of your day.